Welcome to our show today. I am Sherry Braithwaite and I am the host for our thriving community and I am with Fernando Assis. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Perfect. Okay, very good. And Fernando is a good friend of mine. He reached out to me in my my group and um, he, he asked me, how can I help you? I love what you're doing and I would love to be a part of helping you. And that's so that, of course, it's just such a generous heart I knew from the very beginning that he is just so giving and he his story is amazing so there are pieces and parts of his story I know how he is today and how he's just so fun and generous but um I don't know what his whole life story is I don't know from his past what has happened to to bring him here or cause him to be the way that he is and do the things he's doing so that those, those are the things that I am interested in learning from Fernando um, he has helped me with media. He's helped me with, um, you might have to correct me. He's, he, he can sometimes correct me with my English and I can sometimes help him with his too. <laughs> but um, he just has helped me with um, just doing recording online. He gave me a full course. Uh, I do feel a little nervous because I'm I'm actually giving a presentation <laughs> in front of my instructor. So there's a little bit of pressure to do all the things I've learned, right, Fernando? So anyway, he's he's done a, an awesome job in helping me and helping our community, supporting us. Um, and so I just wanted to get to know him more and give you guys a chance to know him more too. He's usually behind the scenes. He's not in the front and um, telling everyone, here I am, this is what I'm doing. So I'm giving him the opportunity. I'm pulling it out of him to tell us, what do you do and why do you do it? And how can we help you also in your mission? So I'm just gonna turn the time to Fernando and just take as much time as you want. You can start with birth or childhood or how, whatever you wanna share, whatever you think is pertinent that can be helpful to our, our single community. I'm very happy and excited to be here with you because I can see the progress of my best media <laughs> training student. Oh, yes. and I love the way you uh, speak now. I love your positive, pos the way positive you uh, talk about your uh, passion, that's your, your project. And first of all, I would like to apologize for my very broken English. Don't so apologize. If, Don't you, apologize. if you can speak in Portuguese, my native native language, I'm Brazilian. You can see my jersey, yeah. Brazilian jersey. There is a reason that I'm using this today. I'm going to explain to you. Uh, we can, podemos hablar en español o parlar italiano, pero uh, in, <laughs> in English is a little bit hard for me, but I'm doing, okay. I'm trying to do my best. So it is awesome. I'm, 53 years old, even that I look like 26, a lot of energy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I am a journalist. Uh, that's my background. I'm Brazilian. I was born in the northeast of Brazil and I moved to Rio. Rio is a very famous city in the world, it's an Olympic city. When I was in the end of my teenagers, I was adult, 18 years old. So when I moved to Rio was my first big experience. So everybody has, a, has, has key moments in their lives. So my first one was when I moved to Rio because I work before being graduated in journalism, I was working for TV. I was producing videos and producing political campaigns for TV. I was uh, involved with so many communications uh, opportunities, communication opportunities. And when I moved to Rio, the reason was to be in the middle of the TV industry in Brazil. Rio is like LA, Los Angeles. And we have the, the, the biggest city in Brazil is Sao Paulo. It's another one is like New York. So, but Rio in that time, 35, 36 years ago was, wow, the capital of arts, you know, oh, yeah. movies and everything. So and when I moved to Rio, it was because of that reason, but something happened in my life. I was walking the street on Saturday night to go to the party, to go to a party. 
with some friends. I was alone, but I was, uh, we had some plans to go to a party. And I was walking on the walk away and I saw two guys with white shirt, tie, one tag here, black tag here. And I walk, I walked behind them. And one of them turned around and looked at me and said, good night, and said, good night. And I said, good night. And I kept walking. So I stopped on the bus stop. It was very common in Rio at that time. Even nowadays, we don't have a lot of cars. We have a lot, but not like very popular like here in the United States. So we took bus all the time. And one minute later, they came to talk to me. And they introduced them, themselves and said, I'm a missionary of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I say, whoa, <laughs> I know your church, I said. Oh. Because I was living in Recife, northeast of Brazil, very close to the church building, one chapel. In fact, I played soccer with the missionaries on, on their P day. I already okay. know that. And no one invited me to go to the church in that time. Wow. That's but so I mean, especially yes. right? But I knew that church. So I said, I know your church. And he they talked a little bit about it and they invite me to listen to them. It was on Saturday night. They uh, made one appointment to visit me on Monday night, two days later. But I forgot was my birthday, April third, <laughs> and I had a dinner with my uncle, who I was living with, and they came, and I was not there, so it was a big frustration for them. And I remember when I was eating, I was oh the missionaries, I forgot the missionaries, and my uncle said missionaries, oh no, forget this, you are <laughs> real. You are here to, you know, to bride and shy, not church, <laughs> not religion. And to be honest, I was, I already was in that time, Catholic, Baptist, Presbyterian. So I had a very strong uh, Christian root in my, yeah. my life. So, and I was frustrated because I'd like to listen to them. So when I arrived home, so I talked to the security guard and they, uh, he said, yes, they came. And it was, mm. I had no idea how I could find them again. So I was frustrated. But think, two weeks later, I was in another bus stop and the uh, Baja da Tijuca is a very, very rich area in Rio close to the, now we have a temple in Rio. So Baja da Tijuca is the place where we have a temple in Rio now. The temple was dedicated this year, in the beginning of this year. So um, in both missionaries came again, welcome. Uh, and I said, hey, I'm here, do you remember me? And he said, no, nah. oh yeah, I remember you. So I had a chance to talk to them again on the bus stop. And they invite me to listen to them again. And I had a chance to listen to them. And it was a very good experience in that time. Very nice experience. We became friends easily. Two weeks later, I don't want to spend a lot of time to talk about my convert process. But two weeks later, uh, well, very important point. It was on Wednesday and the next Sunday, I was in the church, the LDS church, as many people know now. Um, two weeks later, I was baptized in the church. Wow. So something that, like, yeah. unbelievable. The <laughs> guy who came from another part of the, the country to walk on TV, decide to change his goals to, to be part of the one religion. Mm. My uncle was so frustrated with me. <laughs> he said, I need to take care of you in a better way, something like that, you know. <laughs> better control of you. Exactly. And my mom was Baptist. In fact, she is Baptist so, uh, so far. Ah. She was a little bit, not upset, but mad with me because of, you know, religion. Yeah. But 
One year later, I was in the middle of the jungle Amazon forest in Brazil as a missionary. So it was so fast. Yeah. My life changed a lot because of the church. My father was his, he keep he's still alive. So he's Catholic. He decided to listen to the missionaries to understand what I was doing in Amazon. And I was a missionary. Like, I don't know in Fahrenheit, but it was so hot. And I was with Thai, like, oh, mm -hmm. oh yeah. <laughs> in the middle of the jungle in Manaus, the city. Many people ask me, did you have a chance to see crocodiles, snakes, monkeys? <laughs> Yes, but not in the city, you know. And during my time and during my two years as a missionary in the Amazon, I had a chance to use my TV skills, my uh, expertise to open many doors to promote the, the gospel on TV. So I brought my mission present many times to TV stations to speak about the, to talk about the LDS church. It was a very, very good opportunity for us so in fact the that situation uh the church here in he, even here in the united states in salt lake the people was like what happened in brazil we have numbers very high numbers on tv now the presence of the church on tv who is this in charge of this and they heard about one elder assis uh, yeah. and when i returned from my mission? Well, I tried to produce one TV uh, uh, show for the church in one of the TVs, uh, stations in Amazon. And another very nice experience, and I can send you pictures if you can, yeah. if you can try to use. Yeah. I produce, let me tell you something very interesting. I produce one Coca-Cola TV commercial and Amazon as a missionary because I visit one TV station and the manager told me, um, I told the manager of TV, can I do something for your TV in, in, in trade? You can show uh, some uh, movies of the church, small movies, like 30 minutes about the church. She was like laughing. <laughs> but in fact, I helped her to produce one commercial for one of the clients, and I produce see the most famous soda in the world, Coca Cola, something like that. <laughs> because yeah. I was working for Coca Cola company, yeah, in real. So I had that uh, expertise. So I produced as a missionary. And one of the products was a beer. Oh, nice. <laughs> So I produce a beer, and I never mentioned this for my mission present because I was so scared. <laughs> when he heard that because of that opportunity, we, we saw a few uh, moves of the church on TV, on prime time, the most important TV station, global TV, local TV station. He was laughing with me like, I, you are crazy, Elder Seas. You are, but I love that. <laughs> so I have a picture. I'm gonna send you, so you can try to put in this uh, because yeah. we're yeah. recording. Yeah. So when I return, uh, the church invited me to be part of the communication team as a volunteer. Was a calling to help the church to you know to open new doors on the media, government, community, in uh, religion inter how to say interface religion interface okay. relationship in a relationship so and i start uh, serving as a volunteer uh, as a public affair mm -hmm. uh, one multi stake direct director yes yeah so after 5 years something happened in my life the church decided to hire me to mm -hmm. be the area the whole brazil area public affairs director yeah. so it was a believable experience yeah. and everything everything started because of my mission in amazon so think about it. if i was walking on the street that night and someone said me asked me or said good night and i never respond my life could be totally different yeah so, you know so small steps 
can change everything. Yes. Yeah. In a good or bad way. So that's true. Right? <laughs> good point. Yes. So that was the first part of my, uh, the changing of my life. When I moved to Rio, I met the LDS missionaries. I was decided to serve in the mission and I started working for the LDS church. Mm -hmm. At that time, when I started working for LDS church, I was already married. I married another uh, former missionary who served in Sao Paulo, the biggest city in Brazil. And when I moved to Sao Paulo from Rio to work for the church, the headquarters of the church in Brazil is in Sao Paulo, I had a big challenge in front of me. My boss, the area president, asked me, change everything, start something new. We need, we need something huge, you know, disruptive, mm -hmm. you know, was my challenger. And I was in front of the big challenge, much, much bigger than me. So sometimes we will have this situation <laughs> in front of us. Yeah. So big challenges. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I was really scared yeah. about it because I was like, whoa. And I remember when I read the Book of Mormon, the book was part of the LDS church, the story of Alma, the son. Yeah. Oh, Alma decided to serve first instead of preach the gospel in the, king, in the, in the kingdom. Oh, yeah. And that experience helped me to understand before trying to build relationship with the government, media, other religions, community, we need to serve them first. Yes. Before preach the gospel. Building trust, right? That builds trust. Exactly. Sure. Building, building yeah. bridges instead of, you know, yeah. because the, the big difference in that time, even nowadays, but it's totally different today. Uh, here in the United States, the church was working to correct the public opinion about that, about it, about the church. In Brazil, we had no public opinion. The church was not known in Brazil. So the people needs the church uh, needed to build a bridge to open a new doors to introduce the church. So we had a very, very unique opportunity. It's easier to uh, build a public image than correct a public image. Yeah. Make sense? Yes, I agree. So we start a pilot program that I call helping hands. In fact, in the first two or three projects, pilot projects, we never call uh, helping hands. We call different names. Mm. But in one moment, I was thinking, I cannot create a new name, a new logo, a new shirt, t-shirt for every project. And I heard the expression helping hands here in the United States for the first time in Miami. Oh, yeah. Because of the, the, the expression helping hands is a very common expression here. Yeah. Even though, <laughs> oh, no, but I'm, I'm talking about in general. Helping okay. hands is a, it's a very common expression. Yeah. And even in Portuguese, mãos que ajudam, or in Spanish, manos que ajudam. It is, it is very common. So, but I love the, the, you know, the sound, helping hands, manos que ajudam, mãos que ajudam. And I decided to adopt that name and create one long-term branding, brand, brand. Mm. So it was a branding uh, effort because nice. of my marketing and communication skills as a journalist, I decided to create a brand to to create a identification you know mm -hmm. yeah so it... many people ask me where helping hand start it was in the united states it was in some other country to be really really honest not the program start here but the name came from miami hmm. uh, so when i saw something helping hands and i start using that name with two hands like that Oh yeah. Very nice. 
the old logo. And in the, in the year of 2000 was the international year of volunteer, volunteer work mm. from United Nations. So we start helping hands in 1999, mm. the, the pilot program. Nice. The first year was International Year of Volunteer Work. So we had an unbelievable chance in oh. front of us. So if I'm talking a lot, you can interrupt me. Interrupt no, me. I'm taking notes. I actually, what you just said, it just has me thinking, there's no doubt that that was inspired. And in the timing, you know how it's always inspired. Programs are always inspired when it's needed. It need, some of these things need to be um, set up the year before they actually get launched. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. in the end of the year, no, let me uh, uh, correct. It was in 2021, the International Year of Volunteer. So in 2000, uh, 2000 we started the, the Helping Hands officially in Brazil after some pilot programs. So in the end of the 2001 year, uh, the United Nations, in front of the whole nation, the all nations, they present a video, like a report about the International Year of Volunteer Work. And they put Brazil, believe me, wow. it's not because I'm Brazilian, but they put Brazil as a first one country Wow. In volunteer work in hours of volunteer work. I say, why not the United States? Because I know the United States do a lot. Yeah. But in that time, I understood that United States give the check, the big amount to help. In countries like Brazil, we don't have a lot of money, but we have a lot of people with a very good heart, yeah. like many others, of course, but with a strong desire to to self serve others. It's part of our culture. We are very open. If you come to the Brazilian house, home, you, someone can offer a food immediately and say, hey, take a seat, you can eat together. The, they never saw you before. So it's part of our culture. We are very, very, many people understand we are very open nation. Yes, that's awesome. So because of that report. We need more Brazilians here. <laughs> no. <laughs> In fact, in this moment, we are not like that because of political political situation, but it's okay. another story. <laughs> but in 2001, they were so excited. So I took all of those videos in report and I sent to the church headquarters. Oh. They were like, whoa. The area of presence was, whoa. Oh. Even the corner of 12, the first presidency. So, was very important moment. Yeah. And, and then Elder Neil L. Anderson, who is a member of the Corn of 12, uh, he came to Brazil to serve as an area president. He, he was part of the area presidency first and he was he became the area president. So I worked very close to him and he, he background is in communication, advertisement industry. So he understood immediately the importance of those you know results and he was very very important uh, and supportive for me and other general authorities like my mission president was a uh, general authority as well elder claudio costa now mm -hmm. he's emeritus elder atu zamorin was another one he unfortunately he passed away so i i had a lot of support in that time okay. and i'm talking about this because of was one very another very important point, moment in my life. So in one moment, my colleagues from any other, many other areas of the church, they were asking me, how, how can I do helping hands in my country? How can I do this? How can I do that? And I was creating a, creating a program. It was not only one project, but a big program, long-term program. And one day I was here in Salt Lake, uh, I was attending a public affairs seminar, international seminar for the church, for the LDS church. And my boss, in one moment, looked at me and said, he looked at me and said, come here. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm going to lose my job. <laughs> I'm, I'm in trouble. <laughs> looked me very serious, like, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> and I looked at him, 
okay, he looked at me, follow me. I was on the uh, 10th floor of the Joseph Smith Memorial Building. Mm. So we took the elevator. Uh, it was so, I was in the middle, in the elevator with him. He was like, very serious. And there was, mm. <laughs> after that, we, we were walking outside of the building on the walk away. And I was so confused. And we stopped in front of the church uh, administration building, the, the first presidency in the Cardinal 12 uh, office, offices. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me, keep following me, follow me. I was in front of the first presidency offices. And finally, the James E. Faust, Faust's secretary, look at us and say, hey, there, he is waiting for you. Oh. And I saw James E. Falls, President James E. Falls, I, first presidency. Oh, I was like, whoa, my sin, <laughs> my sin was so, uh, so uh, uh, serious that I need to talk to a first presidency. Yeah. What did I do? And when we, we were in front of President Falls, who served his mission in Brazil, ah. who uh, uh, spoke Portuguese. He passed away, unfortunately, of course, we know. And he looked at my boss and he said, can I speak in Portuguese with him? And my boss said, well, of course, you are the boss, something like that. <laughs> so we started to have a very nice, very nice conversation in Portuguese. And he invited us to take a seat and uh, he looked at me and said, Hey, tell me a little bit about your family. I was, I'm not here to talk about my family. Yes. <laughs> or, except if I did something really, really serious. Yes. I started talking about my family. And in one moment, he looked at me and said, I heard about something, some helping hands. Tell me a little bit about it. And I start summarize the, 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 the whole idea in five minutes, you know. Mm -hmm in front of someone like that, not like here, we, that I'm talking 30 minutes to explain one point, but I yes. was in front of him in five minutes, I summarized. In the end, he looked at me and said, okay, give me a Brazilian hug. <laughs> so we hug and kiss people all the time. It's part, of, it's part of our culture. And he gave me a hug. He was taller than me and I wasn't, in, you know. And he looked at me and said, do you have some uh, maracujá juice in Guaraná. Maracujá juice. Maracujá is passion fruit. Ah. And Guaraná is a soda from Amazon. Very famous. And I uh, said, no, I, I don't. He looked at me and said, I love passion fruit juice in Guaraná. Very yeah. busy. That's he great. had a chance to serve in Brazil as a missionary. He returned as a regional administrator or something like that. Oh. He had a very, very strong connection with Brazil. Awesome. Yeah. One, no, it's not one week, but a few days later, I got a call from my boss. Fernando, the first presidency has a one assignment for you. <laughs> what, kind of, uh, what kind of assignment? No voice you have for me. No, I have no assignment for you, the first presidency. Wow. They want you to write the first draft of the Helping Hands uh, uh, handbook for the whole church. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> it was on Friday. On Saturday, one day later, I was supposed to return to Brazil. And I had to change my flight to stay in, here in Salt Lake at least one more week on computer mm. writing. Uh, the first line <laughs> like crazy on the in, inside my hotel room, like typing, wow. like, and I took a lot of a uh, long time only to explain important moments. That was an unbelievable experience because when I start typing, my mind was open, mm. I was writing like one page in you know less than 20 minutes nice. in one moment my mind closed 
like stop i stopped typing and i was like no ideas my mind was very confused like a big storm you know in the bad way it was like confused confused and i could not type in i could not create any phrase any sentence when i felt like i cannot do this because of maybe i'm i'm the wrong person to do that mm. i felt exactly like that yeah in one moment i was desperate and i decided to pray when i prayed 